Happy Wednesday morning to you all. Doing another uh, work commute. Haven't done that uh, in a little while. Uh, I've been working from home most of the time. Ugh, get the fingers under there. Um, <laughs> I've been working from home a lot, uh, as much as I can anyway. Uh, but uh, now I've got some contracts uh, with customers that are uh, lining up, and I actually have to be on site for that, which is good because it gets me out of the house. And uh, I can do ride vlogs, right? <laughs> Taking the Rebel out this morning. I have uh, the Super Cub at home as well, but uh, I need to get on the highway and get there uh, somewhat quick instead of uh, dawdling. So I have no idea what I'm going to talk about this morning. I haven't really planned a uh, ride vlog. It just kind of happened. You know, diarrhea, the brain, stream of consciousness, whatever you want to call it. I've gotten stuck uh, as far as my motivation to continue editing the Cannonball Run series. I've got probably three more videos in that series to finish it out, but man, I don't know, I just, I got burned out on it, I guess, uh, just sitting, staring at the screen for so long and all the uh, tedious hours of Compiling and synchronizing the different video angles and cuts and uh, I just, I don't know, I, I got burned out on it. It's not so bad to watch it as a finished product or even to watch the raw video once or twice, but scrubbing through the timelines and trying to chop down you know, 10, 12, 14 hours of footage into something uh, digestible means that I'm re-watching the same content 15, 20 plus times. <laughs> so if I've got, uh, you know, 20 hours of video, then that means, you know, multiply that by 20. You know, it could potentially be 300 hours worth of uh, editing just to uh, get that down into something that's uh, not so ridiculously long. Anyway, I'm just bitching. <laughs> I, uh, I, I do intend on finishing the Cannonball series hopefully soon, but uh, I'm just taking a little break from editing those. The day eight video was annoying me because my microphone came unplugged on the camera, so I didn't have a lot of the audio of what uh, Tyler and I were talking about. So it made things difficult to try to line it up, figure out what was going on and all that. Now, I did, luckily, luckily, uh, I had the uh, group audio recording that day, and it was working. Uh, why it didn't work on previous days that I had fired it up, I do not know. Um, the only thing I can think of is that the PackTalk Edge that I had, the dedicated unit that was connected to the audio recorder, somehow had fallen out of the mesh. It lost its grouping because it was on, and at the beginning of the uh, audio files, it would say, you know, grouping successful or whatever, but then there's no audio for three hours. You know, it's just recording dead silence. And then suddenly it starts recording. <laughs> or it starts, you know, receiving audio. I don't get it. I just don't get it. So anyway, it was recording the audio for the sections where my uh, microphone had come unplugged from the camera. And that gave me something that I could at least synchronize to and I could hear most of the conversation that was going on. Uh, it sounds like I'm talking through a potato, but you know, that's how it goes. So anyway, I'll get to uh, finishing that up soon, I hope. Put out day eight and then I think the remaining two or three days back I can condense into one episode uh, with Neil and I riding back through Louisiana and then me on into Texas. So. Probably two episodes, maybe three, we'll see. And then I'm gonna try to dig into the PCX at about the same time to do that remediation project to just close the loop on the whole adventure. And uh, I'll have the cost analysis in there, you know, how much the trip cost me as far as uh, 
food, fuel, lodging, you know, expenses uh, for uh, wear items and consumables and things like that, plus the damages. Uh, I'll have it broken out by category. Uh, I'll try to compile the fuel economy numbers. Uh, it was pretty good, you know, high high 80s, low 90s, I think, was my average uh, overall. The Before the variator killed itself and I had to go back to the factory variator, I was above 100 miles to the gallon most of the time, which is pretty impressive. But with the uh, factory variator back in there and the engine spinning higher RPM, it was chewing more fuel and my speed was lower. So Anyway. That's the cannonball thoughts for the morning. This cannonball videos get such thin viewership, uh, it's hard for me to uh, justify putting a lot of work into it. I, I mean, I try to, and I, I try to make them fun and watchable and entertaining and put the, the video overlays and all that stuff in there uh, to kind of put back those missing aspects that the video can't convey, like altitude and you know, uh, ascent, descent, things like that, cornering angle, all those good things. I wish I had weather sensors uh, also recording for barometric, wind speed, things like that. That'd be really cool. But anyway, it, it's a lot of work and <laughs> this videos don't see a lot of views. Uh, I think all of my 21 cannonball videos combined uh, over the last couple years have netted a few hundred bucks. <laughs> so it's really bad uh, return on investment as far as time is concerned. It's a passion. It's a labor of love. Definitely not a uh, money maker. Have I mentioned that I'm ready to get out of Houston? Uh. just as parked. I am not stopping with that guy blazing right up my ass. the trick with this uh, crazy Houston traffic is in a car or a motorcycle but particularly on a motorcycle you have got to have your head on a swivel you got to be looking all directions at the same time and that's really hard especially when everybody's nailing their brakes in front of you because invariably the split second that you take your eyes away from the front view looking at your side mirrors or doing a, a head check a head swivel the guy in front of you is going to nail his brakes and then whammo there you go I've always been pretty successful with it over my riding career and two plus million miles, probably closer to two and a half million now. Uh, it was all great until uh, last October when that uh, guy intentionally ran me down from behind. That was uh, unfortunate because I looked, he wasn't there, and then bam, literally a second later, I was on the pavement. So it's kind of hard to defend against somebody intentionally coming through your blind spot at plus 30. Not a lot of defense options there. Whenever traffic is slowing or uh, making a sudden stop, particularly on the highway and the leftmost lanes, oh man, I don't stop behind it. I get out of it if I can. I'll ride the shoulder. I don't care about being illegal. I do not want to be in the back of that line or in the middle of a rubber band that's uh, everybody's snapshotting back and forth because they're on the gas, on the brake, on the gas, on the brake, you know. Uh -uh, no. Thanks. I'll stay out of the middle of that. I don't want to be the meat in that metal sandwich. There's a lot of gravel on this highway today. I hope my cell phone doesn't get broken. There are tons of rocks out here. 
more than I've ever felt. I mean, it is just beating the shit out of my hands and my legs. It's crazy. Tons of little pea gravel and stuff. I don't know what is going on. Maybe it's this guy. I'll bet it was that guy. It's hauling sand and gravel for concrete. Just painting the highway. those of you who uh, haven't really traveled in Houston much, the reason that uh, our roads are so crazy and bad here as far as their quality is uh, the roads are concrete everywhere. All the highways are concrete. So pebbles and stones don't get driven down into the asphalt like they do in other cities. They just get kicked up and bounced off of the other hard concrete. So that's why we have so many broken windshields and stuff here. back is already starting to hurt these uh, 20 maybe 30 minute rides are about all I can do on the rebel right now my left foot has gone numb Yeah, the Rebels ergonomics are not working out for me right now. At least not until I can get some more healing and rehab. My, uh, my hands are totally gone. Uh, my neck and shoulders are starting to hurt a lot and my lower back is getting me. So uh, left foot is numb. Sitting on this thing is not doing me any favors.